Thanks for joining everyone. Um, this live is going to be about um, satanic ritual abuse and the legislation um, or the lack of it in this country but um, I actually um, I saw I was I saw a video this morning made by a lady called Alison Tomlinson and the YouTube it's just a short YouTube video called Vicious Circle the need for UK Legisl legislation on SRA she's found um, some legislation in America in the state of Idaho whereby she um, whereby they they recognize satanic ritual abuse and they've actually got legislation in place for um, to criminalize um, when whenever there's SRA allegations um, so it's just to just to show people yet more evidence of SRA and the need for legislation in this country like Idaho so I recommend you watching this short video as well but I will be um, basically going over everything that she goes over so um, I'm actually going to read out this is what she says this is Alison Tomlinson and she says unlike certain states in the US the UK has no laws specifically criminal, criminalising satanic ritual abuse, or SRA. The UK police are not trained to recognise SRA. When cases of SRA surface, the Crown Prosecution Service may be willing to prosecute. Um, so, when she, she explains, when cases of SRA surface, the CPS may be willing to prosecute for physical and sexual child sec uh, child abuse but they often omit the ritual elements of the crime on the grounds that the jury will find them unbelievable therefore we have a vicious circle juries don't accept the existence of SRA because they rarely hear about it they rarely hear about it because the evidence is not put before jurors for fear that they won't believe it Criminals go unpunished because their crimes are not recognised. And then it says, she says, as Andrew Boyd says in Blasphemous Rumours, this is a book by, I've not read it myself, but I believe it's it's extremely good. Um, I was written some time ago by Andrew, Andrew Boyd. Um, he, he states, although sexual and physical child abuse is a crime, forcing a child to witness the mutilation of a pet and terrifying it to the extent that its personality might fragment may not itself be a criminal offence. So, as I said before, uh, oh, and then she, she goes on to say that the UK could learn from legislation passed in Idaho, in the state of Idaho, in 1990. The intent of this legislation, which is called Section 18-1506A, is to provide a felony offence for specified abuse of a child as part of a ritual. So here's what the legislation states. I, I'll, so I'll post the link for this as well. It's um, entitled Idaho Statutes. So it states that a person is guilty of a felony when he commits any of the following acts with, upon, or in the presence of a child as part of a ceremony, rite, or any similar ob observation, observance. So these are the, this is the legislation. A, actually or in simulation, tortures, mutilates, or sacrifices any one blooded animal or human being. B. Forces, ingestion, injection or other application of any narcotic, drug, hallucinogen or anaesthetic for the purpose of dulling sensitivity, cognition, recollection of or resistance to any criminal activity. C. Forces, ingestion or external application of human or animal urine, faeces, flesh, blood, bones, body secretions, non-prescribed drugs or chemical compounds. D involves the child in a mock, unauthorised or unlawful marriage ceremony with another person 
or representation of any force or deity followed by sexual contact with the child. E places a living child into a coffin or an open grave containing a human corpse or remains. F threatens death or serious harm to a child, his parents, family, pets or friends which instills a well-founded fear in the child that the threat will be carried out or G unlawfully dissects, mutilates or incinerates a human corpse. So this is a clear description of satanic ritual abuse and it's recognised in the state of o in the state of Idaho in the USA. I'm not sure if any other states recognise it, but isn't it about time that they did the same in this country? Because as I'll, I'll I've, I've kind of found I've found a case where like a um, an example of a case whereby there was convictions, there was prosecutions, but it was just for the sexual abuse elements of it. Um, so I'm going. This this will tie in nicely with with what the um, what the need for the legislation, um, because these people are just getting away with um, everything else apart from the paedophilia aspects of their crimes. So this is um, this is taken from Cornwall Live, and the article was written on the third of March, published on the third of March two thousand and nineteen, and the title of it is called Witches, Abuse and Murder, the Pagan Paedophile Ring that Rocked Cornwall. So I'm just going to read out from this and then, then you'll, you'll kind of see about the all the elements recognised of satanic ritual abuse, but yet not prosecuted for, only the elements of sexual abuse. So this is the article. Um, it was a paedophile ring that saw men indulge in their sick fantasies wearing hooded robes and terrifying their young victims with daggers. Decades of abuse culminated in a trial which dramatically implicated a parish councillor witch and the victim of a partly unsolved murder that shocked the county a decade earlier. The two men accused of being part of a paedophile ring that ran a witch's coven in St Ives carrying out ritualistic, sickening sex abuse of young girls were given lengthy jail sentences in December 2012. Jack Kemp and Peter Petrowsk, both from Falmouth, spent years tormenting their female victims, one said to be as young as three years old. Both men had denied any involvement in the abuse, claiming they were victims of a witch hunt. Well, of course, they always deny it, don't they? Of course they do. But a jury at Truro Crown Court dismissed their protestations convicting the pair of a string of offences dating back to the 1970s, as well as finding Kemp guilty of several more recent sexual assaults unconnected to Petraus. Jailing Kemp for 14 years and Petraus for 18, Judge Graham Cottle told them the offences range from the extremely serious to the truly horrifying. Petrowsk was said to be the high priest of a witch's coven that met in an undisclosed location in St Ives and, uh, and ordered the girls to carry out his, six fan his sick fantasies. The court heard Kemp videoed the abuse. He also took part in the assaults along with friends Peter Solheim, who was later found murdered and mutilated floating off the lizard, and Stan Peary, a notorious paedophile who died in jail following his conviction for sex abuse in the mid-2000s. Judge Cottle told them, you are two of the surviving members of a paedophile ring, together with others whose names have been repeated frequently in this trial, who were members of a ring that operated in Falmouth in the 70s and 80s. And then he says, um, I'm satisfied that you have both had a lifelong sexual interest in young female children. The trial has featured ritualistic, sickening abuse of young, young children. So he's recognising the fact of the ritualistic elements, but it's not prosecuted. It's not criminalised. The scars left on the two victims, which cannot be named for legal reasons, are so obvious that it would be, seem extremely unlikely that either of them have any real prospect of recovery. Um, 
And then he says, finally, the truth about your lies and your undoubted propensities are caught up with you. Um, and then it says, the duo's victims gave harrowing evidence from behind a screen during the three-week trial. They were told how they had been abused by their tormentors before being given money and sweets to buy their silence. Again, that's something I've heard before. Petrowsk was convicted of rape aiding and abetting an attempted rape and indecent assault. Judge Cottle sentenced him to 18 years in prison. Kemp was found guilty of 10 sexual offences, including indecent assault and indecency with a child and was handed a 14 year term. Again, well, where's the, you know, if they were convicted, if, they, if the law was as it is in Idaho, I wonder how long they would have got then for all the ritualistic elements of the crimes as well. Um, the jailing of two members of the Cornish paedophile ring who ritualistically, sexually abused young girls echoed the murder of witch Peter Solheim. So we see in language here, we see in the use of the word ritualistically and witch. Um, so they are recognising that these, these people do these things and that they do exist and they are known as witches and, um, and so on and so forth. Uh, during the case, Mr Solheim was named by victims as part of the paedophile ring. The court heard the, how the men indulged their sick fantasies wearing hooded robes. Again, that's something I've heard firsthand. And terrified their young victims with daggers. But it was not the first time the name Peter Solheim had been uttered in the same breath as child sex attacks and witchcraft. Six years befo uh, before, in the same courtroom at Truro, in front of the same judge, his name was at the centre of a sensational trial. Mr Solheim's lover, Margaret James, was accused of and convicted of playing a leading role in his grisly murder. James was charged after the 56-year-old former parish councillor's uh, drugged, mutilated corpse was found floating in the seas off the Cornish coastline by a passing trawler. While James was found guilty of conspiracy to murder and jailed for 20 years, the other plotters have never been unmasked and, it, and remain at large today. It was said that James became aware of Solheim's plans to leave her to be with a long-term mistress. A police spokesman said the investigation into Peter Solheim's murder has never been closed. Um, officers from this particular case have worked closely with officers investigating his death to ensure any potentially relevant new evidence is reviewed. We continue to urge anyone who may have new information regarding Mr Solheim's death to come forward to the police. Um, during James' trial in the summer of 2006, a grim picture of Solheim was revealed. Paul Dunkel's QC, defending James, outlined to the jury Mr Solheim's obsession with witchcraft and sex. He made thousands of pounds swapping and selling antique firearms and other weapons. The court also heard he was a pagan, prone to casting spells on people who upset him. And he had been accused of being a paedophile by members of the local community at Carnkey near Helston, where he lived. Indeed, unknown hands had sent him hate mail for his unsavoury appetite for young children, argued the defence team. On three occasions, Mr Dunkles applied for a, a, a bad character application to show the darker side of Solheim's nature. When a judge allows such an application, the jury may hear a person's previous convictions or reprehensible behaviour as evidence. The QC strategy was to persuade the jury that because the dead man's behaviour was so questionable, anyone could have hatched the murder plot and eventual slaying. Judge Graham Cottle eventually granted the application. Mr Dunkles argued, we say, Peter Solomon was a man with a propensity to commit sexual offences against children, to, to trade in illegal firearms and to engage in black magic and satanic rituals. This provides anyone with a motive for harming him, which ends up with him being dead. Again, so much, so much mention of sat uh, satanic rituals and elements of ritual abuse. Why does it not? Why is it not being dealt with in legislation like they do in Idaho? Details of Mr. Solheim's sordid existence were laid bare, including his dealing in hardcore pornography by copying videos before selling them on, his attic was described as an occult laboratory. It includes rep recipes for potions designed to seduce women, 
and dozens of um, books of witchcraft. So, this, people who, who carry out this satanic ritual abuse, a lot of them are not outwardly Satanist. A lot of them hide behind the guise of Wiccan, being a Wiccan, or a Pagan, or a Christian, or an Atheist, or a New Ager, whatever it is, they hide behind an otherwise um, kind of, you know, a, um, what's the word I'm trying to say? They, they hide behind a normal kind of facade to other people. So Mrs. Watson said ceremonies were held throughout the year at different locations in gardens and woods and on the beaches. She said they never involve nakedness or robes or hoods and only on very rare occasions do children attend. I did write a pagan play for them to perform in my garden. Peter Solheim attended a couple of meetings before he fell out with me and I told him he was not allowed to attend anymore, he was on the dark side. Um, and then it just finishes off saying, as well as Mr Solheim, another figure loomed large during the Crown Court trial in the shape of convicted paedophile Stanley Peary. He was a friend and neighbour of Kemp's and faced a trial of his own in 2005 at Truro Crown Court. The jury returned unanimous verdicts on a list of sexual offences and he was jailed for 12 years. Victims of Peary's depravity was to go on and give evidence of the vile abuse they had also suffered at the hands of Kemp and Petrowski. So it's it's really interesting and it's great that Alison Tomlinson has, has brought it to people's attention about um, the fact that the state of Idaho recognise um, all the elements or many of the elements, I should say, not all of them, but recognise many of the elements that victims of satanic ritual abuse describe and therefore it's criminalised. Um, so it's about time we had the same thing in this country. So I'll... I'll um, I'll put a link to this anyway, and um, I'll also put a link to um, Alison Tomlinson's video. Um, but it's 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 good to hear that Idaho have this. But what is going on in this country? That after all this evidence, you know, and it's just the you know, too. It's gone on for too long now. This you know, this nonsense about SRA doesn't exist. It's gone on for way too long. So, um, you know, share this video. Share Alison Tomlinson's video. Um, share the links that I'll provide, um, education, uh, knowledge is power and you know we need to smash this because you know we need to be the voice of the children who don't have voices who are victims of this horrific crime right now and be the voice of those brave adult survivors um, that you know are doing the best and I, I just I, my hat you know hats off to them for having the bravery to come forward and speak about it because you know, these they, they make real threats, they threat th threats of death, you know, and they see um, people being murdered in front of their very eyes, babies and adults, children, they know what these people are like, so, and they you know, hats off to the, the brave survivors for coming forward. Thanks for watching, share this video please, we need to expose SRA and get rid of this nonsense that it's a myth. Talking of which, by the way, I'll just finish off on, um, I was watching The Chase last week, I don't know if anyone watches it, but it's just good to just switch off to, you know, a bit of, bit of um, you know, watching quizzes. And they had a question about, it was a, it was a, um, a multiple choice, one of the multiple choice questions. And it was about, they were asking, I wish I could remember the exact question, but I can't. But it was basically, they were, they were asking, um, what's the name of, of the myth of the, um, they called it a myth anyway, and it, it was it was satanic ritual abuse was the answer. There was a couple of other answers, and then the chaser who was um, what she called, not the not the mistress, what she called um, one of the chasers anyway, the young woman. I can't remember her name. Um, she said, "Oh yes, satanic ritual abuse. That's been disproven by experts." And you just think, "Oh, it's so frustrating. These idiots. These." you know, who were just, oh, the experts say it's not existed, therefore, you know, it just makes me so angry. But yeah, the vixen, thank you, Helen. It was the vixen who said that. So shame on her and shame on the chase for bringing that out as as, uh, as a question. You know, how must victims of SRA feel when they see things like that? Have a nice weekend, everyone. God bless.